Rafi called me two years ago and said, would you like to have dinner with Dr. Ruth? And of course, I jumped at the opportunity. Uh, and we had this dinner, and it was, you know, it, I knew she was 88, but I didn't know how incredibly active she still was. So right away when I walked in the restaurant, she jumped out of her chair uh, and ran up. You know, I knew that this woman had a lot of energy and would be interesting to follow. Uh, and then at that dinner, she told she started telling me all these stories from her backstory, which were so harrowing. Um, and it was especially the little things at that dinner, though, that really made me want to make the film, the way she interacted with everyone in the small restaurant, the host, the waiter, and then, um, as we've discussed since, on the, on the way out as she was getting into her car, uh, a gentleman, much, much like Jonathan Capehart in the film, the journalist who thanks her for talking about LGBTQ issues uh, in the 80s, a gentleman just came up and said something very short, just thank you, I used to listen to you secretly, um, and you made me feel okay. And it was, it was those real small things and the way she you know, so authentically interacts with each person that she, that she intersects, even if it's only for 15 seconds, you know, and you get to watch that person's face as she walks away, um, that really sold me. Would your life have been different if, for example, you had come to the United States and gone immediately to Chicago or Los Angeles? What has New York meant in the trajectory? Right. Very excellent question, because like Ruth Bader Ginsburg said, only in America, I say what has happened to me, Annette, could have only happened in New York, because New Yorkers accepted immigra immigrants with accents like mine, and I do believe that if I had been in any other city, including your Los Angeles, it would not have happened. It really happened because of New York. People who are Holocaust deniers, who say the Holocaust never happened. I did remember, I do remember your mother, who came from Europe. And people, even more important, people who say, who have Holocaust fatigue. They say, stop talking about it, it's so long ago. So what that film really permits me is to say, People, it did, ha it did happen, and let's all be together that it will never happen again. On a very serious note, Hitler is dead, and my four grandchildren, and you and I are alive. On the train, I had one doll, and one little girl cried. Her name was Erna. She cried. And I gave her, she was eight, so she was two years younger, I gave her my doll. And when I met her later, she immigrated to the United States, she's not alive anymore. When I met her later, I said, Anna, do you remember that I gave you the only doll that I brought from Frankfurt? She didn't remember, I was willing to shoot her. <laughs> In the Jewish tradition, like it said there, said ladat to know means uh, sex also. It also says in the Talmud that a lesson taught with humor is a lesson retained. I could not tell you a joke, but I can hear jokes and hear, hear them, and I can use humor in my classroom. And the other thing it says, which you know as a professor, that you learn from your students. That's one of the reasons that I'm grateful that they still let me teach. Everybody listen. <laughs> Watch him. Everybody listen. I'm not supposed to say that. Annette, you don't hear it, okay? Everybody, please, if you know anybody who votes for an Academy Award, I promise good sex if we get nominated. <laughs> <laughs>